In this video, I'm going to show you how a convolutional neural network, which is the essence of computer vision, works. We're going to take a look at the kernels inside it, the convolutional layers, and how they work together into making a decision. We're going to use a very awesome tool that will allow us to visualize what happens to the image inside each layer of this network. So imagine that your task is to classify which object is in this image. So we're looking at a coffee cup image over here, and we want to know what's actually inside this image. We could basically cut up this image into rows of pixels or columns if you wish. However, the moment that we do that, we lose the 2D dimensionality of the information, which means that if the cup was slightly moved in this image, we will not be able to identify it as the same cup that we saw before. So it's very important that we keep the 2D information that we have over here. And this is something that we can achieve by using a kernel, which is basically a matrix that holds a bunch of weights over here, which will be multiplied by the values of the pixel and will allow us to capture the 2D nature of this photo. So let's look now at an example using this awesome tool called the CNN Explainer. This is a very good tool to show you what happens inside a convolutional neural network. So if we're analyzing the same cup of coffee picture that we were working on before, you can see that it will have three channels because uh, colored photos are RGB, so red, green, blue. Now let's zoom in at what happens on each channel. What you see over here is the effect of the kernel. The weights of the kernel is what the neural network will try to learn in this case. So if I place my kernel over here, I'll be taking the first corner made out of six pixels. What will happen is that the weights of the kernel will be multiplied by the value of the pixel. Then we sum all of those and we put it as one pixel in the new image. This is the same thing as applying a filter to your image and that will allow you to extract information from this photo. So you can actually view kernels as being a filter or a method of information extraction in this case. Now, the same operation of applying a kernel will be repeated to each channel. The weights will be different, and those weights will be learned through our training phase. So now we basically know what happens on the first layer, the first convolution that we have in a neural network. We will just apply this kernel, roll it over our image, turning it into a filtered image, which has some sort of information. We can repeat this process multiple times by connecting together multiple convolutional layers. The weights of each layer will be different, and the information that we will be extracted from the photo will also be different. You can see it over here that the photo is changing shape. Each filter is extracting either the edges or focusing on the inside or focusing on the shades in the photo, which is what you see, for example, over here in this filter. Another thing to notice is the size of the photo has changed. So we started with a 64 by 64 by 3. However, we moved here to 62 by 62 by 10. Let's first look why did it change from 64 to 62. When we look at the kernel, we cannot basically extract information from this first column and the first row over here because there are basically no pixels before them that we can sum together with them. And that means we will have to lose the first row and the first column from each photo. And that's basically why we use two pixels. Remember that this effect will repeat every time you do a convolutional layer. Now, the second thing is, how did we move from three channels to 10 channels? Well, the simple explanation is because we've used over here 10 filters so 10 different kernels and that has transformed our image from a three channel image to a 10 channel image as you can see over here each one of them has different colors and different representations on the inside now another method to extract information from an image is the max pooling or pooling layers in general what pooling layers do is to take either the max the average or the minimum value from a set of pixels so here if we define a pool of two by two we will basically take the maximum value between those pixels values and we will move it on to the next layer and that means in the case of a two by two uh, pool that we will lose half of our pixels because out of each uh, four pixel we will only get two the image that we will have on the last layer after we apply a bunch of kernel and a bunch of pooling might not be representative of the original image it will mainly become an abstract representation of the original photo that we fed into our neural network when we change the photo that we're working with, we will see that the convolutional layers and the pooling layers will have different effects on each photo. And that's what you will see over here. And those effects are what helps the CNN make a decision about the class of the image that we're working with over here.
So now we know that the two building blocks of a CNN and computer vision in general are the convolutional layers and the Boolean layers. Let's see how we can code those. By using Keras from TensorFlow, we can easily add a convolutional 2D layer over here, define how many filters we wanted. So if we wanted to build a CNN similar to the one that we had over here, we would have to set the number of filters to 10 over here. And that will be equivalent to this set of filters that we have over here. The next argument that you need to define is the size of the kernel. We've defined here a 3x3 three three kernel, which is exactly what we saw when we looked at this image over here. This has a 3x3 three three kernel that summarized the information. You can also change the shape of the kernel. I encourage you to experiment with the size of the kernel to find the best one that suits the task that you're trying to solve. Just like what we saw in the previous video, we need to set our input shape since we're working with images over here. It's good to set the width, the length, and how many channels you're working with. If you're working with a black and white picture, you will have to use one over here. Now, the main difference between convolutional neural networks and neural network is the fact that we have to move from this 2D nature that we've built to a 1D nature, and that's where the flatten layer comes in handy. This flatten layer will turn into one flat data array that we can use and feed into a dense neural network over here and afterwards to our output layer. Now, the rest of the steps, the training, the compilation, the choice of the optimizer and metrics are the same as what we've discussed in the previous video that I encourage you to take a look at. Training CNNs for computer vision is a computation intensive task, so you're going to need a lot of CPU or GPU powers if possible. So I strongly suggest that that you use Google Colab, you can switch to GBUs by hitting this runtime button and changing the runtime type. You can choose between GBUs, so graphic cards, or TPU, which are hardware specifically built for training neural networks. Switching your hardware will give you a very good boost in your training time and will certainly make your life easier. So don't forget to tick that box. That was everything I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much for listening and until the next time.